When it comes to wiring, one of the reliability points is anywhere there's a connection and there's always the argument or debate about soldering versus crimping. Crimping is generally the preferred method for a variety of reasons, but when you're doing this by hand, it's time consuming, particularly when you're doing production runs. So we're here with Ryan from Powertune to talk about a couple of pieces of equipment to simplify this task, make it far quicker, and most importantly, much more reliable and consistent. So for a start, Ryan, let's talk about the, the hand method. So we're making a, an adapter harness, which is what you're talking about here. Yep. Uh, doing it by hand is absolutely viable. Where are the downsides to doing that? So basically when you start to scale, and any modern sort of motor vehicle typically has like, you know, around 180 to 190 pins on the ECU. So that's quite a lot of hand soldering and crimping for an individual to do. Yeah. and then comes into the, the potential for errors creeping in, uh, maybe the crimp isn't quite right, so yeah. how much of a problem is that? I mean we, we always sort of talk about the benefits of crimping, but of course when we say that the crimp is superior, we are expecting here a quality crimp using the right materials and the right uh, crimp tools, so yeah, where, where do the problems creep in? So typically, you know, you, you may have, you know, operator fatigue, that's one thing. Um, we can have tooling errors, tooling that de 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 deteriorates over time. Um, there can be all sorts of little mistakes that creep into an, uh, an individual's, you know, work. Yeah. All right, let's look at the alternatives and what power tune are using here for production runs. So you've got two pieces of equipment behind you here. Yep. Let's start by talking about the measure and strip tool. So, I mean, there's a hint in its name, but talk <laughs> us through what it actually does. So basically the, the machine will take a wire from a roll and we can program into it how many pieces of that wire, whatever length we want, and whatever strip method we want on that, that piece of wire. And we can hit go, and the machine will literally do it all for us and spit out at the other end, say, 196 wires stripped at one end and not stripped at the other. Uh, also literally in seconds, correct? Absolutely, we'll give you a demonstration very shortly. Yeah, and I mean, doing this by hand, I mean, most people could understand that measuring this out accurately and then stripping each one, even with a quality motorsport gray wire stripper, it's going to take a hell of a lot longer than this machine can do it, and time, of course, is money. Let's also talk about the stripping technique for Tefsil wire, which is what you're using here. It's the sort of go to wire for a professional motorsport quality harness. What are the complexities around stripping the insulation off that wire? So with a, a, a traditional PVC type insulation, you'll find a lot of the crimpers actually clamp down on the PVC and pull each direction. And that will actually just snap the, 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 the insulation apart and that'll provide your strip. Now with the Tefcel wire, you can't do that because the Tefcel is basically a, a material that won't stretch and break like that. So what we need to do is we actually need to cut that without cutting the conductor and then pull that away from the, the existing um, insulation. Yeah, so that's where the, the danger comes in and we see you know, a lot of people who are used to working with lower grades of wire and I cringe when I see people using a set of side cutters to strip insulation. Almost impossible to do that with Tefcel so cleanly, neatly, at least without damaging the underlying con conductors and often that can go unnoticed, correct? That's exactly right. And the last thing that you want to do is make a loom, send it out to a customer, they put the car on the dyno, plug the loom in and all of a sudden the cars are cylinder down and they don't know why. All right, so at this point we've got our 196 uh, stripped wires. Yep. Obviously then we need to add a, a crimp to that or a terminal to that. So that's the second piece of equipment here. So yeah. talk us through how that works. So basically that, that machine here it will strip a, an unterminated piece of wire. It'll take the strip. It will then apply the terminal that you want, whether it be a DTM or a, more commonly a super seal connector. And it will actually crimp that to millimeter perfect or 0 0.01 of a millimeter. Um, around the wire and create basically a, a perfect crimp. So you've got a guaranteed result every time and also again in, in an absolute fraction of the time that it would take to manually do this? Yeah, that's exactly right. And like you said, repeatable every single time. There's no fatigue, the machine doesn't get tired. Let's just come back one step though because when you're talking about that first piece of equipment, you, you mentioned uh, sort of partially stripping and you also mentioned solder. At the start I, I did mention that solder and crimping there's always a bit of uh, sort of debate as to which is superior but in some areas solder is absolutely the only option so when you mention solder why is that important when you're making these adapter harnesses? So typically with the factory header end of the, the uh, adapter we'll find that there's, there's no option other than to solder a physical wire onto the pins that are on that header. There's no way to really crimp nicely um, so it's kind of a, a necessity at that point.
Uh, one of the problems when we, we solder, even with the best possible technique, is we'll get solder wicking up the wire and it's really the end where that solder finishes that can work hard and, and, and fail if it's exposed to vibration and movement over time. What are you doing to mitigate that potential failure point? So on some of our lower quality, uh, sorry, lower quantity looms, we basically put a 3D printed enclosure around the back of the case, and then we will pot that connector up to a certain height on the wire, which provides that stress relief around the solder. All right, thanks for giving us some insight into this. Obviously, it's not equipment that uh, the average home enthusiast is, is going to be able to justify, but uh, also just interesting to see the techniques that are available at the professional level. So thanks for your time there. Absolutely, not a problem. Thanks, Andre. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.